the home is just filled with a lot of tension it's just filled with a lot of anger just filled with a lot of you know not a safe space and I'm like so if this place is not a safe space okay for me because anytime I speak up you spank me you flog me you insult me why would I want to share with you what I'm going through why would I want to share with you you know my curiosities why would I want to ask you questions because already the boundaries have already been set it's like and it's so funny because I have heard a lot of people also say this that you know they expect their partners to beat them to show them that they love them and I'm like how can this even be accepted hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel I hope all of you are doing well so I am back with another video just another chit chat with Adrali and uh, in today's video I just want to speak about you know the African style of parenting and how it affects um, children and how it affects us basically in general okay so if you grew up in an African home if you grew up in a Ghanaian home Nigerian home South African home you know there is some level of toxicity. I mean, I wouldn't say some level. There is a very high level of toxicity in our homes that I'm like, why is this so? Why is this supposed to be like this? I think we have all been through that um, stage where we questioned if our parents were our parents, where we questioned if truly we were the real children of our parents because of how we were treated because of how they spoke to us because of how they punished us because of just how they just talked to us anyhow i feel like for most african parents okay having a child is equivalent to ownership like when they have children it's like they own you. So they try to bend you however way they feel like it's okay. They try to just pull you to this side, just direct you here, just do all sorts of things without even taking into account the fact that you are your own person. Do you understand? They don't even try to get to know you. They don't even try to find out who this child is. To them, it's like, I'm going to mold you into what I want. And I think that is very bad because what ends up happening is that we are not even able to freely express ourselves. We are not able to even know who we are because our parents don't give us the chance to actually, you know, just be who we are. We just try to suppress our opinions. We try to suppress our beings. And I think that is very wrong. And, um, our parents don't even understand like they don't even understand that what they're doing is wrong they don't understand that their own style of parenting is wrong and I don't really blame them like I don't really blame our parents because you know deep down they really want they really want the best for us deep down um, they love us <laughs> deep down they just want us to be the best that we could be and they want us to be what they weren't able to be and so I think they just try to find means and ways to just get us to that position where they weren't able to get to and if that means just beating you up if that means you know just insulting you and just disciplining you in all sorts of ways they are just going to do that without caring about how the child is feeling to them it's more yeah, to them it's more about, you know, I see my child being there and so whatever it takes for me to push this child to that place, I am going to do that. And they don't really care about the now. They don't really care about how we're suffering and they don't even try to evaluate other ways of, you know, dealing with certain situations. For them, that is the only way they know and I feel like it is also because that is how they were brought up it is also because that is just how they were raised and so that is the only truth they know that is the only thing they know and that is just how they choose to deal with the children um that they have like later in life but i think it's high time parents start to understand that we are in a different time like now it's a different time um 
we need to start changing the narrative. We need to start being closer to our children. We need to start being closer to our family members. It's really sad that you can't even have a normal conversation with your parents. Like most of us don't even have any form of relationship with our parents, with our family members because of all the scars that we have um, growing up you know, in their homes, in their house, where we were never really allowed to express ourselves. It's like, when you say my head aches, they're like, why does your head ache? When you say, oh my God, I can't breathe. They're like, why can't you breathe? You're supposed to breathe. And I'm like, can't I even express my pain? We live in a society now where most African children are very timid. They can't express themselves. They don't know what they want because they have always lived in the shadow of their parents. They have always lived according to what their parents want them to do and what their parents want them to be. And it's like you're even scared to be your own person. And I think that is totally wrong. Um, as a parent, your own is to counsel your child. Your own is to, you know, love your child. Your own is to provide for your child. Give your child, you know, whatever the child needs that is within your reach. You know, most parents go above and beyond for their children. I give that to them. But I feel like they also need to understand that, that children are their own people. That children are their own persons and they need the space to grow. They need the space to germinate. They need the space to just mature into themselves. It brings a lot of dysfunction in our homes. Most of us don't even have any form of communication, any form of relationship with our parents because we have always been scared to speak. The home is just filled with a lot of tension, it's just filled with a lot of anger, just filled with a lot of, you know, not a safe space. And I'm like, so if this place is not a safe space, okay, for me, because anytime I speak up, you spank me, you flog me, you insult me, why would I want to share with you what I'm going through? Why would I want to share with you, you know, my curiosities? Why would I want to ask you questions? Because already, the boundaries have already been set. It's like, you can't speak, you don't value me, you don't validate me, you don't think I'm a person who can think, okay? And um, anytime I speak out, anytime I speak out, it's just insults here and there. You will never amount to anything, like da 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 da. And it's like, why do you complain now if I don't have a relationship with you? Or why do our parents complain now if we just, you know, go outside and start behaving a certain way? Yes, we can't behave that way in the house because you have taught us that we can't be ourselves in the house. And so what ends up happening is that, you know, you kind of carry yourself out or you, or you kind of, you know, just seek advice and seek counselship and seek things from other people and from other places and that can go completely wrong. I feel like the home should be a safe space. The home should be a place filled with love, should be a place where we are not scared to just be ourselves. But for most African homes and for most African families, it's like you hear your dad coming home and you quickly just run into your room. It's like you don't want him to even see you. Like you hear your mom coming home and you're like, oh my God, I need to quickly do this and do that. And it's like, and like I said, I do not blame my parents. I do not blame them for the style of parenthood and parents parenting. Um, but it's just that parents need to understand that they can be all that without, you know, being dictators. Do you understand what I mean? Like you don't have to be a dictator for your child to become the best child in the world. You don't have to be a dictator for, you, for, you know, your child to listen to you. If I have a relationship with you and you speak to me, I will listen to you. If I don't have a relationship and you speak to me, I would just be standing there looking at you whilst you speak, but then I'm not even taking anything you're telling me. And for most of us as well, it's like the use king flogging. Beating is the most common thing in any African home. They would beat you with a comb, with broom, with slippers, with ladle, with spoons, wooden spoons, with anything. Anything our parents find 
that they feel you know would inflict pain on us that is just what they do and i'm like why are you treating your child as a slave why are you doing this and this to your child and you know most of the times after they have finished beating you the thing they would say is you know why i beat you i beat you because i love you i beat you because I don't want you to go bad. Like, I don't want you to be a bad child. I beat you because I don't want you to be like, you know, all these other kids who are just running on the street. I beat you because I love you and that is why I beat you. And it's so funny because I have heard a lot of people also say this, that, you know, they expect their partners to beat them, to show them that they love them. And I'm like, how can this even be accepted? You know, and it, it's not a surprise because when your parents beat you up and when your parents flog you, slap you, insult you, do all these types of things, they justify it by saying, I did this to you because I love you. And so you go into a relationship and your partner is being super nice to you. Your partner is, you know, just being the best person he can be. And you're like, why are you not hitting me? You should hit me for me to understand that you love me. This is what we are doing. This is this is what we are teaching our children. And this is just what keeps growing. Like our homes are just so toxic and so dysfunctional that it just grows up in us, matures and just comes out in all sorts of ways, in ways that we don't even expect. And, you know, sometimes we just have to sit down and just look at the past and see why is this so? Why am I craving for somebody to hit me? Why am I craving for somebody to insult me? Why am I craving for somebody to just treat me wrongly? Because in your head, you think that is love and that is not love. Anybody who hits you, anybody who insults you, who just disqualifies you as a person, anybody who just speaks bad about you who doesn't respect you it's just not for you but it's like well our parents did the same thing yet they loved us and so if this person doing the same thing to us it means the person loves me and it is just it, it's just very sad it's just very sad i feel for me mine came out in a way that I'm never fully able to express myself. Even till this day, I find it hard to just speak. I find it hard to have a normal conversation that flows because it's like, I don't want to hurt anybody. It's like, I have never had the chance. I mean, growing up, obviously. Growing up, I've, I never really had the chance to express myself. I never really had the chance to really speak. And so I was always, you know, shut down. I was always just quiet. Um, whenever you say something about me, I will not answer. I will just look at you, finish talking, and just leave. You insult me, I will just look at you, do whatever you want to go, you want to do, and go. Beat me up, say all sorts of evil, and I will just there, be there, and just you know, after you have finished, I would go. You would ask me a question, and that is because like it's 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 logic. Like you ask me a question. Why did you do this? And immediately I speak. It's like, bam. Like, immediately you talk. It's like, slap. And so I'm like, why are you asking me if you don't want to hear what I have to say? Why are you asking me what happened? And I'm trying to answer to you what happened. And then you go like, you even have the mouth to speak. Like, like the, what do you want me to do? Do you understand? Like, what do you want me to do? And so most of the time, we just harbor a lot of hatred. We just harbor a lot of pain in us. We just harbor a lot of suppressed feelings that just comes out in a different way. Like, we express that by just distancing ourselves from our parents, by distancing ourselves from our family members, because it's like, you don't see me as a valid person. You don't see me as a person with feelings. You don't see me as a person who has a voice and so why am I supposed to come to you for anything if you're always going to you know treat me the way you always do do you understand what I mean and I feel like like I said our parents love us okay to bits it's just that they love us the way they know how to that is just how they know to love us and 
that is not how it's supposed to be. Like, I wouldn't want to give birth and my child would have the same treatment that I had because I know the impact that has had on me. And it's like, when you even grow up and want to talk to your parents about, you know, how their actions made you feel and how their actions made you, you know, just had an impact on you, they just become very, very defensive. Um, you know in 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 their action and I'm like can you just take responsibility for what you did to me because that really hurts me that really pained me that really has shaped me into the person that I am today can you just at least acknowledge that what you did was wrong and that you're going to try to listen to me but it's like I don't want to listen to you I don't want to listen to you whatever I did I did whatever I did in the past was the best thing I was supposed to do and yes, maybe for them and maybe for you, it was the best thing you could have done. But for me, it scarred me in a lot of ways that I am still healing from it, that I am still trying to get over, that I'm still trying to, you know, erase certain memories. And yes, now we just try to laugh about all these things. But really, it doesn't make you a better person it doesn't make you a better person you know what I really like is the fact that I am seeing my my friends and you know some family members my family members friends basically I am seeing some friends who um, have given birth and are you know doing the exact opposite with their children and that is what we need as Africans that is just what we need in our homes a lot of love a lot of space a lot of safe zone for our african children because there's just hell out there for us there is a lot of bullshit out there for us a lot of hatred outside for us and so we don't expect to receive that same kind of energy in the home like the home should just be the place where i come and i just go like my heart is at ease. The home should be the place where I'm able to, you know, just vent out my anger, just speak to people, just, just be in love, just be surrounded by love and be surrounded by the people who love me. And I think that is what a lot of us are lacking in our homes. That is just what a lot of us are lacking in our African homes. And I feel it is not right. It's like, as a child, you're treated the way a child is not even supposed to be treated. Like, you're supposed to live as a child. You're supposed to fall. You're supposed to rise. You're supposed to cry. You're supposed to, you know, be curious. You're, you're supposed to ask questions as a child. You're supposed to make your errors, get burned, and, you know, just learn. But it's like, our parents are like, no. You're not supposed to do all that. Even when you go out to play, it's like, why are you playing outside? I'm a child. I'm expected to play. You're always very cautious because you don't want your clothes to get dirty. I can understand that parents go through a lot to just wash our clothes and everything. But as a child, that is also how you learn. That is also how you're able to build relationship with your community, with, you know, the people around you. That is just how you are supposed to be as a child, a carefree person, a free-minded person. But we always suppress these emotions in our children. We always suppress these things in our children. And it is just not it at all. So yeah, basically in today's video, I just wanted to just speak about, you know, just growing up in the African home and how dysfunctional it is and how it affects us in a lot of ways there's just a lot more things i need to talk about but the fact that i don't do these types of video in a more structured way just kind of leaves a lot of things unsaid and so yeah i think now that i'm about to end the video i'm just you know starting to think about a lot of things now a lot of points i could just speak about but i don't want this video to be too long and so probably i will do a second part of the video maybe not today maybe another time so if you have any experiences if you want me to address certain things just leave it in the comment section if you have been a victim 
of African parenting <laughs> just let me know let me know how you felt let me know how you're dealing with that now all these flogging and beating and insults is just an outlet for them to just vent out their anger and for them to you know just vent out how disappointed they are for example you just like in class you're just last in class and they're like after my hard end, my after paying your fees, after doing this, after buying you books, after doing this and that and that for you, you just spend my money and you just come last. Like how dare you? And they just hit you and just say all sorts of things. But then you also have to understand that not all children are blessed with I'm blessed. It doesn't mean the others are cursed. I just mean that not all children have the same way of learning. You know, our brains are not the same. The way we process information is not the same. You know, there's just a lot of things that goes on in the human brain and you can't expect somebody who always places first. You can't expect somebody who doesn't even read and just passes exam to be the same person as somebody who has, you know, difficulties in learning. And I think our parents don't even understand that things like this exist. To them, it's like, go to school, win. That is it. However you, however you choose to win or however, um, you know, that happens, that doesn't matter because they have paid your fees, you have food to eat, you have a roof over your head, you have no worries, okay? Your job is to just sit in class and just get a great A and they just leave all the other things outside, you know, what goes on in school, what I like to read, what I don't like to read. Am I even able to process what I am reading? Am I even able to understand what I'm reading? All of that is just foreign to our parents and it's like, it's just, it's just really hard. It's just really hard to grow up as an African child. Um, it's just really hard to grow up as a Ghanaian child, but I hope that one day these things or these things would change and that we, okay, Gen Z is, and that we become better parents, that we become better, you know, counselors for our children that we treat our children uh, that we treat our children the way they're supposed to be treated we treat them as people as children who have brains who can learn who can understand and you know just just love them just just fill them with a lot of love most of us we don't even know how to love because we we don't know what that is like we have not been treated with love we have not been grown up and bred with love we have not been fed with love it has always been insult it has always been something like not even a thank you our african parents don't even tell us thank you like who are you they don't even tell us thank you you do something for them and they're like well it's expected of you but then when it's you you always have to say thank you you always have to say please you always have to do all of this but parents are excused from all of those things and I'm like how is that even possible you want respect treat me with respect that is how children grow children grow by mirroring their parents and so whatever you do that is just what I am going to do so if you want me to respect you respect me and you know it's just it's just a whole lot of mess anyways this is the video let me know what you think and I will see you guys in my next um yeah see you guys in my next video. Bye.